that I could make it without Christ in my life and all the things that I tried to do they seem to turn somebody else oh but for me I just can't see well then one day I was lonely so lonely and all of my so called friends
All right, it's time to begin this evening. And again, we just appreciate everybody coming, uh, being in our Sunday evening service. Good to see the Agape House. Guys, we appreciate y'all coming down, making the drive. And uh, anyway, but you know what? We're ready uh, to have church tonight. We're ready for a move of God. And just uh, we appreciate the presence of the Lord, what he done this morning. We're expecting good things tonight. Amen. Would you bow your heads and your hearts again? Heavenly Father, again, we just love you and we thank you for everyone that is here, God. And we thank you, Lord, for this privilege that we have to be in your house. And God, we need your presence tonight. We need, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit would reach down, meet every need of every person. We give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. Let's worship him. My soul says yes unto the Lord. My soul says yes unto the Lord. For He's a great King. He's doing great things. My soul says yes, yes, yes unto the Lord. I went to the Lord, repented of my sin. I went down in the water and the Holy Ghost came in. He brought me out of darkness. To his marvelous light, he set my feet on straight street, and now I'm doing right. He gave me a song, even the angels cannot sing. Oh, glory, hallelujah! I have been reaping for his great things, he's doing great things. So, see, yes, yes, yes.
He's worthy tonight. Amen. Ushers, would you come? We're going to receive tonight's evening offering. Now, this offering pays for that wonderful, fine air conditioner that you feel. And because uh, it's a whole lot cooler in here, in here than it is outside. And uh, so give us, give them to the Lord. This is how we pay our bills and keep things going here at the church. Bow your heads and your hearts again. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to give back to you, Lord. We ask, God, that you would continue to take this offering, multiply it, and divide it, that it would continue to meet the need. We thank you for the facility that we have, and I thank you for everyone that has to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Healing lepers that cry, have pity on us, giving signs of Barnabas, sitting there in the dust. When they came to the well with a bucket, you know, but she left with a river in her soul.
tell you the greatest miracle of all is the salvation of a soul he can take your feet and put them on a solid ground turn your life around amen you can be seated this evening in the house of the lord again we welcome each and every one of you and uh, that are here and if you're watching live we thank you as well but let me make these announcements uh really not much different than uh this morning uh let, i do want to add one uh, august the 6th the Children's Church only will be going to Memphis to the zoo, and uh, they're going to uh, take the kids down there, so the cost will be $20 for a ticket, and they need to bring a lunch. And uh, so uh, keep that in mind. That'll be August the 6th. It'll be here uh, before you know it. Also, uh, August 12th, 13th, and 14th will be in revival with Brother Larson. And so uh, please keep praying for this revival, make plans to attend, and also be inviting those to come to be with you that weekend, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. And uh, we're just expecting a great, uh, a, a great move of God during this revival. Also, if you're interested in being a, a church member, see Sister Jennifer, and uh, she has that. She also, along with the information, and, and uh, the, she has our church um, It's a faith. Because it, it would be important if you're going to be a member of a church, you need to agree with what we preach, what we believe. And you need to know what we believe. And uh, so uh, if you're interested in that, see Sister Jennifer. She can help you out with that. And also if you're interested in being water baptized, you can see her as well. And uh, now we don't let her, her baptize anybody, but she can get your name down. And uh, so... Uh, and we'll we'll make it happen. So we're excited. Got great things again. Continue to be praying for our building program, and uh, what the Lord has in store for us and our next phase. And uh, we're just excited and just so thankful uh, for what God is doing, and so thankful for what we believe that He is going to do. Amen. Don't forget Wednesday night, seven o'clock. We're going to pick back up in Bible study. We've got something for all ages. So come be a part of that. And uh, you need the Word, you need to, uh, to study the Word, and uh, to see, well, it's what teaches us and shows us how to walk, and that, it changes our life. So you need, you need the Word. All right, Sebastian, would you come? He's not singing, but Sebastian's going to do a word of encouragement. I've seen this young man grow the last couple of years. I've seen him grow up. I've also seen him grow in the Lord, and I appreciate this young man, and, and uh, I'm going to let him bless you tonight. Well, this is not where I'm comfortable at. I'd rather control the mic. Than it. I'm going to be in Matthew uh, 5.
14 and 15. It says, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all who are in the house. It's not a secret that we're about to go back to school. With going back to school, it's stepping into a dark place. But if you have your faith, you don't even have to try to be a light. It, it just comes immediately. And it says, so let your light, sh- er, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it lights, and it gives light unto all who are in the house. Just walking through the hallways, you're going to be a light. You'll be a light unto everybody. Whether you want to or not, if you're a believer, you're going to be. And I encourage you to be a lot. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Be the light. Hey, that is a, that's a good word. That's a good word. That's not just for the young people at school, but that's for you on the job. Amen. So, all right. Emily, would you come bless them in song?
Worship him tonight. Come on, give him glory, glory. Give him glory, glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, I'm glad he saved me tonight. Hey, if he can save me, he can save anybody. That's the truth. If he can save me, he can save anybody. Praise the Lord. Hey, you know what? It's a good time to pray. It's a good time to pray. You got a need tonight. We want you to come. Let's, let, we're going to pray one for another. If you got a need, we'll bring it. Bring it to the Lord. They're going to continue to play. We're just going to worship. We're going to take some needs to the Lord. He's a miracle working God. We're going to believe God for some big things. Would you come? Worship him. I give you glory. Give him glory, glory. tonight. I give you glory. Come on, glory. church family, would you come? Jesus, Lord, I give you glory, glory. glory. Oh, yeah. Oh, I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, worship. Come on, just worship. Worship tonight. Come on, let's just give him glory a moment. With the crown of thorns, oh, yes. you became my king forever. With the crown of thorns, you became my king oh, yes. forever. With the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. That's oh, he did. My 
come out. Do you remember oh, that? When he rescued oh, yeah. me, just a moment there, he set me oh, free. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, I give come on, you whatever glory, you feel like. glory. Whatever you oh, feel like. I give you glory, glory. Oh, yeah. I give you glory, glory. Praise the Lord.
something from the Lord. Now is your time. King forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. With the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. And with the crown of thorns, you became my king forever. That saved me. Oh, and he rescued me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you, Lord, for your glory tonight. We thank you, God, for your presence tonight, Lord. I thank you, God, for the fact that we know that you, God, are still on the throne. God, do you still hear and answer the prayers of your people? God, I'm thankful that tonight, God, I stand before a people, Lord, that deal with real needs. God, those that are watching live, they're dealing with real life situations tonight. But God, I'm so thankful that God, I can look at anybody and everybody. It doesn't matter what their problem is. It doesn't matter what their bondage is, Lord. I can declare by the power and the authority of your word that the cross of Christ is the answer for anything that they need, Lord. And God, for that, I'm grateful. God, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give that you have given us to continue to spread the good news of the gospel to those that are around. Because, God, you are the answer. Oh, what Jesus did up on the cross is all that we ever needed. And God, we're so thankful. We're so thankful, God. We're so thankful, Lord. Thankful, Lord. Just continue to worship just a moment. Hey, the presence of the Lord is here. Let's just let's just worship a moment. Let's just worship a moment. Whatever you feel. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, close your eyes and sing it. Just... Oh, yes. Oh, yes.
and you close your eyes and worship him a moment. Worship him. Oh yeah, say the name of Jesus. surely are in the presence of the Lord. We never know what the power of the Spirit is doing at moments like this. What needs are being met and what things that someone's going through that they are actually being edified and strengthened to continue through. And I'm just thankful that I'm a part of a church that is, allows the moving and operation of the Spirit. Amen. 
Thank you, singers and musicians. Y'all did outdid yourselves again tonight. We have the best. We have the best singers and musicians. So, while we're standing, if you'll stand with us, we will get into the Word. I won't keep you long, but I believe there is something we need to say. If you will turn with us to the great book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. We will begin reading at verse 14. And read through the end of the chapter. And the word of God says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth, because you say, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eyesalve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. I will sup with him and he with me. To him who overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He who has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Let's read verse 21 and 22 one more time. To him who overcomes. Ain't that our goal? To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Lord, Father, God, we thank you, God. We thank you for this opportunity, God. God, we thank you, God, for your word and for your spirit that has been here, God, and that has already moved and met so many needs. And God, I just ask you, God, that you will anoint me, God, that you will put words in my mouth that I might be able to speak what you have put on my mind and my heart, God. God, I pray, God, that you will open the ears and the hearts of your people that we may hear, that we may receive, and that we might even apply it to our lives by your grace, God. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord? I mean, I could just sit there and listen to the praise and worship and be in the presence of the Lord all day and be happy. But tonight we are going to talk about a simple thought. And that thought is simply to overcome. Because... You know, we can have just as, and it didn't, I didn't plan it this way, but I'm kind of piggybacking off Pastor's message this morning, but just as Peter had experienced all the things that Pastor talked about this morning, we can experience the presence of the Lord and see Him do miracles and move in lives and hearts. But yet, it's easy to fall into the traps of the devil to fall back into the rudiments of the world, the flesh, and the devil, to allow trials and temptations to sift us and to set us back and, not, and us not go forward to what God has desired us to. Because the main, core, the main objective is to see souls saved, but after that, I, I, could, I want to hear you shout. I want to see you run. I want you to shout with joy and show love, and all these great things. But most of all, I want to see you overcome. 
I want to see you standing shoulder to shoulder with me in heaven. Whenever the rapture takes place or I go by the grave, I want to know that my friends, that my brothers and sisters that are here with me are there with me because they did overcome the trials and the temptations. And the only thing that will get us there is the foundation of the truth of the Word of God. Because all the experiences and all the things that we go through will not hold us, but the truth of God, the foundation of Jesus Christ and Him crucified is enough to hold you through the strongest of storms. And if we don't preach a true and proper foundation for you to be able to latch on to, just as they were in the days of Jeremiah, the sheep will be scattered because there won't be no teachers to teach them and to look out for the dangers that are coming into the church. So, a little background of what we just read. The Laodiceans. This is, most scholars will agree, some will differ because we can't agree on everything all the time, but these epistles written to the seven churches are actually dispensations or revelations of different church ages. And here we are seeing the Laodicean, which is the church age we are in now. So if we are truly in this church age, what are we talking about? You see, Laodicea was actually a town in the Lucas River Valley. And in that town, you had three other cities real close. And you will actually see that the Colossians, the epistle to the Colossians was to be shared with Laodicea. It was actually part of a tri-city area which was Hierapolis, Laodicea, and Colossae. Them three was right there and they were big trading routes. People would come from miles and miles around to trade and to gather around these hot tub pools that they had because on one side of Laodicea they had these magnificent hot pools of water that was rich in mineral and people thought they actually had healing properties. So they would come from miles around, trade their goods while they was in the, the Tri-City area and they would go lay in the tubs. And then on the other side of the cities were mountains and they had water and streams coming down, fresh cold water coming down. But you know, Laodicea had a problem. They was right in the middle of the two. So they made aquifers that would actually carry water in from the hot pools and then also carry water in from the cold streams and things from miles away. But by the time the water actually got to Laodicea, it was no longer cold nor hot. It was actually lukewarm. And it was so enriched in minerals and stuff, if you was like a visitor and you came and take took a drink of it, it would actually make you want to vomit. And whenever we know these things, we kind of get a sense of what we're talking about because they were real big in trading in the, in to black wool and their supermarkets and people coming and buying. It actually brought in lots of money. They made eye salve for the eyes. And with all this money and all this but hustle and bustle, with all of this things that were going in, well, truthfully, just as the church nowadays, we have money, we have goods, life's pretty good. But it, just as it did the towns of Laodicea, it has made the church nowadays in America. We are neither hot nor cold. We really have no want for nothing. I was talking to a woman the other day in a town in Uganda. She said she there was these kids, they call them street kids, and their church was trying to feed them. And the kids were actually going behind these different stores and restaurants and picking out chicken intestines because they use almost everything to cook with except for the intestines of the chickens. And they would actually dig them out of the trash and eat them. Because there are parts of the world still that don't have everything that they need. But we take it for granted a lot of times. And what it has done is not made us hot nor cold. And that's actually not even my message tonight. But 
it's a good thought to have on our mind. Because when we are neither hot nor cold, we are actually setting ourselves up to be sucked in by the world. To be overcame by our temptations and trials. Because part of the flesh and the world that has you want, knowing that you don't have to have God to survive the next day when you really do need Him to survive the next day, but because you have what you need, you're actually relying on flesh more than what you are wanting to, or that you even acknowledge. Because it's so easy to get what you want and when you want it now. So we have actually came to this place in the scriptures because Jesus is sending a message to the church saying, I wish you not cold nor hot, but I want you to overcome the temptations of the world. And along the way, you're going to experience temptations and trials and chastisement because he will chastise those who he loves. But to those that do overcome, they are promised to sit at the throne of God. So I want to just back up that now since we've got a general idea of what's going on around this time frame because, you know, if we understand the context and the time and the area around which the word is written, we have a whole lot better understanding of what the meaning is. If we know more about the word then, and we have the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, we are a whole lot less able to err in it because it cannot leave the foundation, correct? So, here's what I want to start off with. A self-reliant church or a self-reliant Christian, we're our own worst enemy. Whenever we've started this Christian walk, whenever we begin to give ourselves to the Lord, when He changed us, whenever He took us and he, we were crucified with Him and we were baptized with Him, risen up a new creation in Christ because of our faith, we were joined together with Him and now we are to walk after the Spirit. We are to follow Him. The Holy Spirit has moved in, set up residence inside the heart. The law of God was written on the tables of the heart and now He is to tell us what is right and what is wrong. He's the master teacher. He is going to guide us, lead us, change the things in us that God wants to change. But whenever we are neither, or should I say, when we are lukewarm and we're not desiring the things of God and the pull of the world is so strong that we still want to tiptoe into the world, how easy is it to be self-reliant? Because whenever we're self-reliant, we will we will mess up because our biggest enemy is self. When our self gets involved in our situations, in our trials, when we try to get us out of that mess that we created and not relying on God, don't things just seem to get a little bit worse? You know, the most memorable times I've seen God move are them times when I was backed up against the wall whenever I couldn't wiggle and I didn't know which way to go and the, everything that was in front of me looked too big and that I was just doomed and I wasn't going to make it. And then just at the right time, there was a but God moment and things begin to change and things begin to shift around and, you know, I was actually able to leave there and look behind and be like, that wasn't so bad. But at the time it was crushing and it was there to, I mean... Sometimes I don't have the words to explain how hard it is, but you know. You know them times you can't even hardly pray. And you're, well, did I, am I not praying enough? Am I not doing this right? What did I do to deserve this? And we start beginning to look at self instead of looking at the one that is able to move to the mountain. The one that is able to fix our situation. You see, the overcomer, every overcomer that has ever made it to the other side has one thing in common. 
They all faced trials, but they all had faith. And they all have messed up. We're going to mess up. We're going to do all these things, but as we grow in Christ, these trials, these situations are to grow us into the person Christ wants us. So we have to beware and of ourselves. All right. I know I'm just kind of talking right now, but I want us to understand some of these things. If I don't teach, if I don't get us to understand these foundational truths, I truly feel like I've not done my job. So I want to, if you was to, let me figure out some good words to put this in. When you got saved and you began to live for the Lord, and you, what was the first thing you wanted to do? You wanted to shout. You wanted to go and tell everybody about the thing God just done for you. Because you felt something on the inside you had never felt before. You felt a change that had happened, and there was something that overcame you, and there was just joy unspeakable. And then the longer you went, the less you wanted to tell people. The less and the more that you just went and you was just, it seemed like one trial after another, one mountain after another, one valley after another, one storm after another, and they just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And that has gotten us to where we just want to rely on self and not rely on the one that is able to help. So, Jesus actually says here, you know, and I'm putting it in my own words right now, but he says, you know, you're rich. You have everything that you need. You're not hot, cold, you're not hot. You have everything that you need. But you're actually, because your faith has been moved, and now you are trying to do it on your own, you're neither clothed, you're actually naked. You actually don't have anything that you think you have. But buy from me, buy from me gold. Buy, here, I'll read it that way I don't get it out of context. It says in verse 18, it says, I counsel you. I counsel you. I come to you with wisdom. God, hey, if Jesus says he's going to counsel you and give you some wisdom, we might should listen. It says, I counsel you that you may buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich and white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with the eye salve. He wants you to buy of him the gold that is tried of fire. Do you know the most precious gold? has been tried by fire. And to get that gold to the purity, to the most pure level, the, tr- the fire has to be brought up to different temps because whenever you begin to refine gold, lower temps brings out different dirts and metals that are not pure. And the higher the temp and that it goes little by little, things are removed and then the refiner is sitting there just dipping out that gold, the particles and the things that... We don't like any of the gold. So he's cleaning it little by little, little by little. But he says, buy from me this gold that has been tried by fire. Do you know the foundation of Christ and him crucified has already been tried by fire? There is not a devil in hell that has been able to defeat it. There is not any power from anywhere that is more and greater than Jesus Christ and him crucified. He has already paid the sin debt. He has already bought all the gold. He's already made it possible for you and me to be able to dress in the white raiments, to be able to be a literal son and daughter of the Most High God. He's already paid the sin debt. So in other words, he's saying, buy from me the things that's really going to matter because it's not the things that you're going to buy with your own money, your own Himself, but buy from me the things that's going to last, the gold that has already been tried by the fire, the raiment that is already white as snow because the things that are, has been tried by the fire, the things that have been are white as snow are the things that I'm looking for in my church. And you're not going to get them anywhere but me. 
You aren't getting them anywhere but Jesus Christ and Him crucified because He is the one and only. He is the great I Am. He is the one that is able to speak one word and the situation be moved. He is the one that is able to cast your burden as far as east is from the west. He is the one that is able to move each and every situation. But how many times do we not quite believe that because... We're not on fire for God no more. Because we got our jobs. You know that thing you wake up every morning dreading to go to. You go anyways because you got these things called bills that have to be paid. Because if you don't pay them, things get shut off or taken away from you. So you've got to go to work. You've got to pay them. You spend all day there. You come home. You're tired. You eat. You go to sleep. And you do it all over again. Is that about the sum of it? Welcome to adulthood. That great thing that kids can't wait to get out of school for. But seriously, we're so used to buying everything that we need. We're not going to bed hungry. Most of us ain't never went to bed that hungry. We're not in a position that we really have to sit back most of the time and just say, I can't but you can God, that we don't try to fix it ourselves. You see, God, right there in the next few verses, he says in verse 19, he says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chastise him. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. You see, we may try in ourselves, but if we buy from the one that is selling the most purest of pure materials that we can ever imagine, the one that is able to give you eternal life, the one that is able to move in and make your situation unbelievably different from what it is now. If you are in that, you know you're going to have to be rebuked a little bit, and chastised a little bit. Y'all here with me tonight? Hey, these truths are the truths that we got to understand because at the end of the day, we're going to be rebuked because we're not perfect. We're going to be chastised because God's still wanting us to rely on Him and to be changed into the image of His dear Son. Hey, because that's what we are here to be. You know, these times that we are against the wall and we are trying in ourselves and we finally give up, that's exactly where God wants us to be. Not to give up all the way, but to keep our faith in Him and say, I can't, but you can. He wants us to the point that we are reliant on Him, that we are so reliant that we begin to gain that zeal again that is able to say, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how this is going to work out. But this one thing I know is that God's on my side and I cannot fail. You know, if you've not looked around, we've been going through a little bit of a drought lately. You know, and as far as me, the drought has affected us quite a bit. When you've got cows and your whole income is on livestock, there's a little bit of worry there. Ponds going dry. All the grass looks like wheat straw. And grain prices are out of this world. Cow prices are as low as what they've been in a long time because so many's already went to the sale. And I can even remember, you know, Mr. Preacher Man talking to the wife, and I'm like, I'm not for sure what we're going to do. She said, me neither, but we are going to trust in the Lord because he's got this. Right. I'm like, he does. But you know, we through all the drought, through all the worry, through all that, he's made provision for everything. Yeah. Our cows ain't missed a meal. We're not going to be have to be like a lot of more unfortunate people and sell cows because God's already made provision. I don't know why, I don't know any of that, but I know that we trusted in him and he has made a way. If we don't bail one more bell of hay, if we don't do anything besides sit there and trust the Lord, we are going to be okay and we're going to make it. It's, I, don't, I can't even explain it, but I know that my God has made a way and I know my God is able to do things for me in a way that I cannot ever explain, that I can't even imagine how he is able to move and do it. 
Now you tell me, when you come to the Lord, what did you have to lose? Nothing. You didn't have nothing to lose because you was not even on your way to heaven. Because all the material things in this world mean nothing whenever you close your eyes. Because we're going to go to one place or the other. That's it. So why are we so, with that knowledge, why are we trying so hard to hold on to everything of the world? We keep it, and it actually holds us back from ministry. It holds us back from a closer walk with the Lord. It holds us back from being edified within the church. Because we miss church because of all these different things. I know we've got to work. I know we've got all these things. But how many times have we allowed it to hold us back when it didn't have to? Because we're just a little bit too tired from having to work. I'll move on. So, I know I'm boring y'all, so I'm going to hurry. As many as I love, I rebuke and chastise and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come to into him and will sup with him. And he with me, to him who overcomes, I grant to sit with me. That's verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Do you know that God has already overcame all the temptations of the devil. He has already walked this earth as a man in the flesh, as a person, just as you and I. He did not have the sin nature as we do, but he was tempted. He could have fell at any times if he would not have listened to the Father. If his faith would have moved and he would not have been in constant communication of the by the Holy Ghost to the Father, if he would not have done exactly what the law had him to do, if he would have missed one prophecy, if he would have not did one thing, and there was things he really didn't want to do. Did you know that? He said, if there's any other way, God, if there's any other way, take this cup from my hand, but not my will but yours. How many times have we not sought God's will, but just wanted ours. How many of us would have not went to the cross? I, I mean, I, I'm not even going to answer that because I'm afraid to even say because there's not many of us, if any. Because there's some people I'm not ready to die for. Now y'all looking at me all funny. I'm still getting worked on too. God's still working on me. But you know what I know now? No trial, no situation, no mess up is big enough to write my name out of the Lamb's book of life. There is nothing that I have done in the past, present, or future as long as my faith stays in Christ and what he has done that is able to kick me out of heaven. The only thing that is able to get me is if I move my faith and I fall into the world, the flesh or the devil that drags me out because my faith is no longer in Christ. Because the things that I have learned, the things that the message of the Christ and him crucified has taught me is if I keep my faith in Christ and him crucified, hard times are going to come. Mess are going to come. I'm going to get really good at repenting because he says you better repent. And we, when we repent for the things we have done, when we figure out that we're not all that in a bag of potato chips too, we're going to realize that God really is working in us and that he has made provision and that if we just keep on keeping on and that we know that we know that we know we are in Christ and that Jesus is there with us each and every day. He is thick and closer than a brother. And that if we can just lose the mindset because of the, if we can renew the mind by the Holy Spirit, then we are able to come to a position that we know that no matter what happens on this side, if our faith stays, we will be open 
overcomers and we will wear a crown and we will have a robe. We will have a ring. We will be able to stand up and sing the song of the redeemed because I am Christ and he is mine. I am a joint heir. I am a child of the most high God. I am the one that is able. I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. I have been renewed. I have been transformed. I I am no longer the old man. I am a new man in Christ Jesus. And no matter what this world throws. I might get down sometimes and I might need some people to pray for me. I might get to a point where I just want to give up. But I know this. If I keep my faith in Christ and Him crucified, I will overcome. I will not fail. I will not be taken out of the Lamb's book of life just because. Because I know where my hope lies. I know where the first fruits are. I know where my hope rests. Because my hope is in Jesus. It's not in this old world. I know at times I put more stock in this world than I should. There's times that I've let possessions and things of this world hold me back. There's times that I have had to ask God for forgiveness because of things that He has told me to do and I have not done. There's times that I have failed in ministry. There's times that He's told me to talk to people that I was scared to talk to. There's times that I not wanted to stand up in front of people. Do you know one of the hardest things for me is to get up and testify whenever I'm not preaching? Does that make any sense? When we have a testimony service, it's all I can do to stand up and testify. And I can, I can shout and testify of the Lord as much as anybody, but the devil knows that it's something that I struggle with. And every time when I don't do it, I feel bad for days and days. Well, you talk in front of I don't care I talk in front of people. It's just the idea of getting up and saying, because God don't want you to. He wants you to hold it in. He don't want you to tell everybody how to overcome. He don't want you to know that the devil don't want you to let everybody know what God's done for you because if we tell everybody how good God's been to us, it's going to edify their faith. It's going to build them up. They're going to be able to come overcome just a little bit easier. Because if He's done it for you, that means He can do it for me. If He can break the bondages that I have, He can break the bondages you have. If He breaks the bondages of these men, He can break my bondages. There is nothing God's not made provision for. So if we are going to overcome, if we are going to run this race with patience, if we're going to come to a place of understanding of no matter what trial, no temptation, no rudiment of the world, the flesh, the world, and the devil is not able to remove your faith. Brother Jeff, if we're going to make it, and I know... I've been bouncing off and echoing, but it's off of what Pastor preached this morning. I didn't know what he was going to preach. But this is what I had. If we're going to overcome, if we're going to be overcomers, if we are going to perform the will of God in our lives, and I'm not just talking about as a church as a whole, but individually it takes each and every one of us even you men in the agape house, God has already, before you was even formed in your mother's womb, made a plan for you. He has already made a plan for you. And the question is, are you going to give to Him and are you going to follow after that will? Or are you going to allow the world, the flesh, and the devil to continue to pull you back in because you rely on self and not Him? For, uh, for everyone else, it's the same. We're not no different. The devil wants nothing more, as Pastor said this morning, to sift you from what God's called you to do. He wants nothing more than to drag you back into the world and make you rely on self and make you feel like you have, that you are rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. He wants you lukewarm. If he allowed you to get cold, you might would notice that. But the devil's greatest tactic is to pull you out just a little at a 
little here and a little there until you don't even know you're not hot anymore. You don't know that your faith has been moved. You don't know you're trying to fight your battles on your own. You don't know that you're praying empty prayers because your faith's not even in what you're saying. You mean I can do that? Absolutely. If our faith ain't in Jesus Christ and what He has done on the cross of Calvary, if we ain't there, if our faith is not there, We are going through motions. And I don't want to see that, church. I don't care to slow down and not get everybody shouting because I want you to know that you know that you know you are an overcomer. I want you to know that the trial of your faith is coming, that you are going to be knocked down at times, but with the help of Jesus, you are not going to be out, and that your brothers and your sisters should be here to lift you up, not talk about you. They should be here to pray one for another, not to be able to gossip about you. They are here to edify you, because next time it might be them. We're not here to cast stones. We're here to overcome. We're here to grow the kingdom of God. We are here because God's placed us in this place. And I have said all this to just try to get us back to a mental and a found to, just to bring us back into remembrance be the best way to say it. That we are overcomers. The trials don't define us. The failures don't define us. We are defined by our faith and by what the Holy Spirit is actually bringing out in our character. If you'll stand with me as Brother Jeff begins to sing. I know I touched on a lot tonight. I know that there has been... I've went from one end to the other, it feels like. But I want you to know tonight... I don't know the situation you're in. I don't know what you're struggling with. But I do know that you, by your faith, you are an overcomer. And when we overcome, just as Christ overcame, we all will have a throne. We will be in the king room or in the king's room in heaven. We will be there shouting and praising and singing the song of the redeemed. But as long as we're on this earth, Monday through Saturday, we have to know that it's by our faith in Christ and what He has already accomplished for us that is going to help us to overcome the trials, trials and temptations of this world. It is by our faith that we are going to fulfill the will of God for our lives. So I just want to gather around tonight. If you have... if any part of what I've said has touched you and you have a prayer, you're going through something and are struggling or if you've been struggling about a calling on your life, if you have been just wanting to give up and you need to just ask God to strengthen your faith one more time, to move in your situation, will you come? The altars are open. Will you come?
is slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the ground he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me. I bond with the precious blood of Christ In Christ alone my hope is found He is my strength, my stone, my stone The cornerstone and this solid ground Firm through the fairest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the precious blood I stand. in life, no fear in death, there is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man. Never pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Could ever pluck me from his hand Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand Oh, in Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is seeking sand All of the ground is sand Oh, in Christ my solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand All of the ground is sinking sand Amen Isn't God good? Go ahead and give him a, ra- a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He is worthy. For I know it might have been a little different, but we are overcomers in Christ by our faith. There is nothing that is able to take you out if you just keep your faith. Because whenever we can't, he can. I hope y'all have a wonderful week this week. I hope. It cools off a little bit and we catch some of that rain that they're calling for. But most of all, I hope that you go throughout this week and that you are able to encourage each other, that you are able to be a light for someone else. Because we're here to grow the kingdom of God. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Amen. Brother Blake, will you pray and dismiss this, please, sir?